Okay, everybody, I'm over here at uh, the Canvas Room, and as I promised, I'm going to do a pre recorded session for you guys for Wednesday because of convocation and all the craziness that it does with the schedule. I just want to take a, a, just a, a minute again to remind you about virtual Wednesdays, and I have a, a document post over there for you. Hopefully, this will render up pretty fast. But uh, basically, um, you know, Monday is going to be a discussion of the case, uh, follow-up assignment or the interactive assignments, and then these uh, pertinent supplemental resources. And uh, as I said, there's no Monday class because of holiday assignments are going to be done Wednesday. It's likely I'll hold a web conference to discuss the case follow-up assignment that, or the session, uh, the interactive session assignment that week. We'll record a screencast and provide feedback. And I would uh, we'll expect everyone to be the screencast. The whole point of this is I really do want you to um, uh, to, uh, to to share your ideas, and and, and that's the point of this uh, point of it. Now, I, as I did, as as I put in the announcements, I moved the due date back for this very first assignment. I moved it back to the thirtieth. Uh, I think the thirtieth at if I'm not mistaken, at 5 p.m. So when you go over to the syllabus, you'll see that. I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I sent everybody an, an, an email, uh, a, a message as well. So I wanted to, uh, to, to, to do that. Now, the hands-on project uh, for, uh, for this number one, I want to take a look at it for a moment. I'm going to take a, I just want to talk about it. And this is uh, Project 110, okay? And it's over on page 35, and I ask you to be prepared to discuss it. I want to just take a, a few minutes and talk a little bit, talk to speak with you a little bit about why, uh, what that case is all about. And, and again, it's a, it's, it's a hands-on, it really is a hands-on project. And this is Home Depot and some of the works they, the work they're doing to renovate themselves and some of the ways that they are uh, uh, working. And that's an interesting case there. But I do ask you there in the, in the, in the hands-on, okay, and the, the, you, let me just, I'm sharing that with you about the, the, the case there in, on Home Depot, or they're on page one, chapter one, uh, they're on page 35, because this thing is fascinating. Uh, uh, some real interesting stuff they're doing there, and then of course, there's a fantastic article um, over in the um, over in the the uh, New York Times, and I want to take you over there for a moment. And sometimes I'm going to try to just with with like this session like this, just add some value to the course. You but but again, speaking with you about some of the stuff that's going on, and uh, our want to walk over there and there's an article and I believe it's in the New York Times about the Lowe's okay and uh, while we're looking at this uh, you can see of course this tremendous tragedy that's unfolding down there in Texas and you know pray for the folks down there they're having a rough time and 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 hope uh, and, and you're going to see in, in the days and the weeks and months to come how important a management information system is in terms of getting aid to people, in terms of getting them assistance, getting them out of bad situations, um, and and it's just thank God we have the technology we have. I'll give you a good example: people who are trapped in their homes, okay, and where the water's now above the, the roof level, or where the water's above the, the street sign level. Once it's there, you don't know where you're at. So the only way they can find those people is get them to, to and CNN was doing this tonight as I was driving home and listening, to give them their address. Once they have the address, they put it into, into, into uh, a GIS uh, application, and they would find their global, and they'd use a global positioning satellite or global positioning system to locate those people so they could find them. Otherwise, they wouldn't find them. And so that's just one of those examples where a management information system, and thank God that we, we, we have the sense 
to create the global information system about 30 years ago and to keep adding satellites and keep adding layers. And here's a situation with people on top of a house. Uh, you, you when, when you're in a flood area, you have no idea where you are because there, there are no landmarks. There's just nothing but water. And so getting those people out of there uh, it becomes quite important and getting to them quickly becomes important. You know, when you're, when you're in flooding, you, know, you just say, well, turn to the third you know, house that's flooded and go for it. So that's an interesting, so there's some, there's a real life drama that's unfolding there and we're a management information system tying these things together. One of the key things for helping those dear people down there is going to be getting them government assistance. That means that the federal government, the state governments, are going to have to work together to get those people, get their applications processed, get them money, uh, get them vouchers to help them deal with the loss uh, and just simply being out of their home out of, uh, and having lost their job. You know, they've got to have a place to live, got a place to eat. So you're going to see, and in, in in FEMA, has, uh, has, has its own very, very well uh, oiled um, management information system. But I want to look over here in the business uh, section for just a minute. And if I could find that, it's a, it's uh, a system about, um, it, it's an article dealing with uh, lows and how they're, and how they're changing, doing some changes with their, um, company and, and using technology. Now, let's see if I can find it in here somewhere out of the business section. And I may have to, uh, let's look at the technology and see if it's over there. You know, I like to, I like to bring you over and alert you to some of these things. Um, Uh, I know that I saw a pretty good article by them, so let me go back over and search. And let me see if I, well, I can find it about Lowe's. No. Getting anywhere there. That's just wonderful. Okay, let me do this. Let's just, uh, and let me, I probably spelled lows. That might be part of it. Lows. Here we go. Yeah, this is one of the things that they're doing. And, you know, we talk about management information systems. And here's one, uh, as this company is, is trying to stay competitive with Home Depot, and that's, that's those, these two are the big dogs on the block. And they're using, uh, introducing in-store navigation using an augmented reality, okay? And, it's an, and I remember taking a look at this article very, very quickly, okay, in, in terms of, of what they were trying to accomplish. And they're going to and they're, they're gonna add this application to, you, you'll be able to download the application and put it on your cell phone. And this will help you navigate and find what you're after much quicker, okay? And, uh, and again, this is going to help them because what, 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 what will go on is this data, this, navi this, this shopper navigation data is going to be fed right into how they design their stores, which will aid their marketing. Okay, and as I told you, it's, it's, it's linking this stuff together. Um, they've got uh, some information here about Lowe's Vision. 
okay? And uh, they give you, a, show you a little bit. And you may want to mess with it a little bit about, but uh, anyway, this is um, some of the ways, that, for example, uh, you know, uh, save and snap and share, 3D design, 3D design. These are some of the things that they're, uh, that they're, that I, I, they're looking at doing. Again, this is about customer relationship management and engagement with their customer. All right. And uh, this is, of course, you know, part of their, their, their uh, public relations effort. But again, uh, taking these systems and now here, here this, is, this is a customer relationship management where the customer drives most of the information gathering. So I think it's it's something quite interesting for you to take a look at. Now, over on page 35, and I'm going to talk about this. This was on uh, improving decision making using the internet to locate jobs requiring information systems knowledge. Okay, and this is 110. Okay, and this was the assignment. I'll go back here for just a minute. The hands-on management project. Okay. And what they what they ask you to do is visit a job posting site, okay, and spend some time at the site examining jobs for accounting, finance, sales, marketing, human resources, and find two or three description of jobs that require some information systems knowledge. This is the authors wanted to to to, to uh, you know let you, let you know that MIS is an important piece of all of this, and. Um, and, and then just you know, asking you to do a, you know, a quick one or two page report summarizing your findings. Now look, uh, just some advice on this. Um, you know, I love screenshots. I like uh, you know, those kinds of things. So don't kill yourself writing a long-winded paper about this. And I, the, the point of the authors is what the, what the author is trying to say is that you know, in every function, you're going to have to have information systems knowledge. And this is what I was talking about some uh, in the lecture today, okay? I mean, this is a pre-recorded uh, 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 lecture that, you know, we po I'll, I'll post this in announcements and this is for your Wednesday viewing, okay? But the, the bottom line is that this whole notion of information systems, uh, management information system, and this is a little bit different. This is the words management, meaning moving resources, using resources, applying resources, okay? And that's, that's a, and, 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 and this, this idea, okay, that you've got to have some MIS knowledge in these different functional areas is quite important. And, and seeing how everything ties together. This, this is why I told you this, said today that this course is going to seem a little ethereal, a little bit impractical, kind of, kind of way too conceptual, because it's, it's just putting your teeth into it is, is kind of hard to do, because it, it, it looks at stuff at the macro level. But again, you know, uh, what kinds of, you know, what kinds of information system skills does a person who you know, who, uh, you know, who works in marketing, what do they have to know? And, and, and this is one of the reasons the authors ask you, I look at some of these job descriptions, is to see how this is seeping in. If you're in marketing, for example, and you don't understand, okay, uh, uh, digital media, you, you're, you're lost, okay? So if you're a marketing major, in, in our business school, and you haven't taken uh, um, any of the design courses that are offered over in the uh, over in the digital media department, or any or, or, or any courses with uh, uh, I believe Mr. Fuller, oh, you've you've missed out, okay? Because marketing is all about that, and I, I can tell you, here's another with information systems, search engine optimization. Uh, I talked with our new marketing faculty member. Uh, and, and he said, do we offer any courses on that? And I said, no, I said, you know, I said, if you want to give me a year or two, uh, I can be qualified to teach it. I understand it. Okay. But I'm not a practitioner of it, but I guarantee you a piece of marketing is search engine optimization. 
how do I get search terms that describe my website? For example, my e-commerce store. How do I navigate that to get the maximum number of hits and to get the best kind of hits possible? Okay, and that, and, and, and then once I do, how I feed that into uh, marketing. And once I'm marketing, uh, the accounting function, how's that, how's that come to play with the kind of e-commerce um, uh, basket we have where the person chooses their items and, they, and, and, and then they pay for them. And then how does that tie into how do we track packages and, and track shipments? You know, I, I buy stuff and I get an email that says, you know, it, it's on the way, it'll be here. And you can look, and you, of course, you know, you can get a package and you can track the packages. Why would why would UPS do that? Why would FedEx do that? Why would Amazon do that? Why do they? Why you know people used to have bought stuff through mail order systems, which is really what Amazon is for years. Why it engages them? It's just like you can like you have ever been to one of these places where they should make the pizza in front of you, or one of these places, uh, or maybe a sushi place where you'll you'll see the people make the sushi. Folks just like to have that kind of behind the scenes look at how their products and services are delivered and bam, there you are. Okay, so this is an interesting project because it also talks, shows how MIS is cross cutting. In other words, it's a piece of everything in, in all the major functions in management. You're going to have to have us an understanding that these systems have got to be put together. And there's some challenges, and we'll talk about this. There are going to be some of those cultural challenges. You remember today in the lecture, I mentioned the FBI and how their regional offices tend to silo information and wouldn't share things. Okay? That's one piece of it. Another is just simply the tsunami of data that we have. Of all types, what do we do with it? How do we handle it? How do we process it? Who, who owns it? Okay, who owns that data? Uh, and you know, and, and layered on top of that, okay, some of the advances in things like mapping. We've talked about that, uh, and 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 so you can see that information systems MIS, okay is really a, 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 uh, a function. It is now, has now become a company function. And the best proof is the fact that we have large companies usually have a chief technology officer or a chief information officer, okay? And so that, that hands-on project there is designed to get your attention so that you understand that this is a cross-cutting thing. But it, in an MIS course, okay, I'm not teaching you how to run software or do this or that. How does it fit with the other systems in the country, uh, company so that everything works together towards supporting company objectives? As I shared with you before, my forte okay, is it, it, my, my forte is company strategy, business strategy, dashboard development. How do we how do we take a database, okay, get data that we can use? How do I create take a, take a spreadsheet application like Excel and create some kind of a dashboard? How do we use those tools to help build predictive analytics? Okay, that's my that that's my piece of all of this. Okay, that's that's really and you know, unfortunately you you, you uh, Miss Turch isn't here anymore to teach the MIS course because she worked at the people who are the gold standard. That's Walmart, and she worked at that system level, and and I can tell you she had she gained tremendous insights about how all this stuff works. I worked with a piece of it. I'm going to do my best to give you that full range, but ultimately, depending upon your major, you're going to have to ask yourself, okay, how how 
does it apply in my function? Let me give you a good example, okay? I, here's, here's, I go buy something on there. I buy some shirts, I buy some shoes, I buy some pants, you know, whatever. Okay. I get an email you know, two hours later or six hours later that says, Dear Keith, blah, 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 and tells me about the purchase, and here's the tracking number and all that. Okay. That's, that, yeah, that's great. And, and, and that's, and those companies that do that are doing great stuff. How could they enhance that? If you're a marketing major, how could you make that something that, get, that, that really gives me a wow factor? Because look, frankly, when my email, when I, when I get the email, I'm not wowed anymore. And I click on the link and yeah, I can see it's an Oklahoma City. Yeah, and I, and I want to get is a list of where it's at. What if I got, instead of a list of where it's at, I've got a video that showed my product and, and as it's traveling. Would that blow my mind or what? How many people would maybe purchase with you just to see that? Maybe give an opportunity for the people who work in shipping as they're, as they're getting the stuff together for you to say, hey, this is so and so to see a picture of those people. Here's, here's John, and he's, he's one of the people who helps get your stuff on the conveyor belt. But that'd be a fantastic thing, be a great marketing thing. Because it, it, would, it would have a wow factor. Okay, and so uh, these are the kinds of things that, you know, fitting these systems together are one thing, okay, but how you can really take them and go to the next level with your functional specialty is one of them, and this is the reason why I gave you this first MIS project, so that you, so that you start to see that and you go, oh, wow, I can do some cool stuff, I can do some great stuff with with, with this and tie it in. You know, there's an old adage, and that is don't collect information unless you want to share it with everybody in the organization. Uh, if you collect information that, that you can't or won't share with everybody in the organization, then maybe you don't need that information. Now, I'm talking about insights to the product, personnel things, or, 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 or that. I, I, that's not what I'm talking about at all. Okay, but having information silos is not the answer. But I, I think you'll find it instructive when you start to look at some of these. I think especially if you're a marketing student, you're going to be surprised when you see the emphasis on digital media, the emphasis on search engine optimization. Okay, the emph the emph the emph uh, emphasis on streaming media. Okay, how does that all work? Okay, and how do you pull together? But and and this first uh, hands-on project gives you a very practical kind of piece. So as we go through the course, I, I, I'll these these hands-on projects are designed to kind of take you to that level. The interactive ones are to, are to give us a case and, and those kinds of discussions. And so now, I also want to say this, as I go through this, uh, these interactive sessions and, and, and I look at people's work, okay, I'm not doing it to embarrass anybody or make them uncomfortable. I will usually, before, <laughs> before I have class, I'll take a look and choose the stuff that looks good, okay? Or has something, or has something to say. It. I will probably call you out now. If if I was live streaming this today, okay, uh, and I was in class, I might stop and say, "Anybody have uh, so and so? Do you want to contribute? What were you? You know, I see you said X, Y, and Z. What were you thinking about when you said that, or 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 said that nature? And if you are out remote, okay." Because I can look, I'm putting my cursor right here, it shows me how many people are participating right now. Well, there's one that's made. Okay, I can click on that and it shows me. But if I'm doing a live stream and there's three or four or five or six or seven or ten of you out there, okay, that's a chance for us to have a full or, or decent conversation about what you, what you put in there. So, uh, I want you to, to be able to do that. Now, I want to I throw this at you as well, okay? 
I'm very, very, uh, I'm, I am, I am, I'm very fine, very happy if you, okay, were to at some point want to respond, maybe, uh, if you want, if you want, instead of a paper, if you want to create a PowerPoint or a slideshow to respond to one of these, feel free. Okay, I, I, I want you to, I want you to be okay with that. That's why I included uh, that. Now, I'm going to take a few more minutes also, and and I want to talk about what all really is in what's what's going on in chapter one. And, and, to, and to help you put it in perspective. Now, I'm going to say this about the textbook, okay? This, uh, this textbook by Jane Lath, the, the uh, Management Information Systems, Man Managing the Digital Firm. This is Kenneth Loudon and Jane Loudon. Loudon and Loudon. But this is the gold standard of textbooks in my in, in, in my It's the best you can get, okay? And the nice thing is it's, it's moderately priced compared to the others because these folks know that they have the technical chops, and they have the IT chops, but they also understand you got a business to run, and and you and and the the IT, which IT should be decision centric. When it's decision when it's decision centric, it's not the tail that wags the dog. Got it? So the systems should serve people. They should work for people not vice versa. And I want to show you, and I want to point out something to you. Um, if you take a look there on page 31 of the textbook, okay, figure one, two, they talk about a socio-technical perspective on information systems. And they talk about, if you look at the left-hand side, the technology alternatives and the final design of the technology. On the right-hand side is the organization and its alternatives. Now, what are they really trying to tell you? You'll notice at the bottom it says, in a socio-technical perspective, the performance of a system is optimized when both the technology and the organization mutually adjust to one another until a satisfactory fit is obtained. Okay. That means that it's a process, it's a, it's a systematic process of negotiation, a systematic process of adaptation. The system ought to serve, okay, the needs of the company, okay? And the needs of the company uh, are, have to be clearly articulated and have to be clearly owned so that the technology can work, okay? My, my understanding of this has, has really come from having, for a long time, for 10 years, I worked as a consultant with firms that did mergers and acquisitions. And I, and I can't tell you how many times that I was in a company where the, uh, the people in one department were using one type of software. The people in another department were using another type of software. And nobody was talking to each other. So what do you do with that? Well, you know, that's, that's a system problem, a big system problem, okay? And the, that, that, that figure there shows you this socio-technical perspective says the software has to be something that augments the human beings and the human effort taken around business. Let me give you some examples, okay? The, it's got email. Email is designed as a, as a means of communication, quick communication, easy communication, very versatile, okay? You can write stuff down and you can read faster than you can listen to somebody, okay? So email is, is designed, email has a certain place. Now, like all of you, your generation, you get this, okay? 
because you understand that email is a little more formal type of communication. A less formal type of communication, okay, is a Twitter. Twitter is 140 characters. Why? Because the people who invented Twitter said, say it 140 words, or usually what you're going to do is you're going to put in a link, a URL, okay, and then a comment, and boom, because you're going to share and it's going to get retweeted, okay? And, and, and that's because it's a fast messaging service. Instagram is... It, it just takes that to a whole different level because bam, you get a picture. Boom, there's a picture with a message. Picture with a message. Okay. Each of those have their own place. Email, Twitter, which is basically nothing more than a messaging service, and Instagram, which is a file sharing serving uh, uh, file sharing service. You know the technology that you you guys use when you take selfies or you take your pictures of yourselves partying and then you send it off and someone else responds. That kind of business. That is really that technology is about the same technology that was that's used for file sharing services uh, for music. Okay, and how does that fit in with my company? Okay, well, you know. Uh, I bought my new car, okay, at so-and-so Toyota. I'm not advertising a brand, but bam, I get it. here's a picture, and poof, it goes out to everybody. Here's me and my new car. Now, why would I do that? Well, I got a new car, I'm proud, I'm happy, and blah, blah, blah. And the people there at that company, okay, have just added some more eyeballs to their advertising. Okay, so there you go. So, I, so there's a, there's a lot going on there. Okay, now your generation understands this technology better than mine, and we invented it. But you understand it because you grew up with it and you live it. It's, this is the same thing as like put it like this. My parents' generation created TV. They invented it, but my generation got it. Information uh, media, be they you know, email, communication, Twitter, or be they movies, radio, television, the, it's rare that the, almost always the people who invent them don't really get it. Okay? It takes someone else to see something there. And I'll give you a great example. Okay? Uh, Mr. Watson, the guy who, who started IBM Corporation, believed that if he could sell a half a dozen computers a year, he'd be lucky because his perception of a computer was a gigantic machine that used things called vacuum tubes that you had to put it in a room to cool it so it wouldn't burn up. And that you had cards that you typed on, and you put it in, and it read the cards. They were called holler of cards. I worked on those systems. He thought he might sell six a year. Well, then came a couple of people who talked about the personal computer. Okay, and now we've got wearable computers. Now we've got chips embedded in devices. The, and, and it's a curious thing. Okay. And this course is going to be a lot of me reflecting on these things. Okay. I, I can share some wisdom in that sense and, and a little bit of experience. Okay. So I, I'll be looking forward to, to what you see. Uh, and I'm going to be interested to see how many different job sites there are out there. They, they talk about monster. Okay. Before I go and, and, and before I wrap this up, okay, um, I want to speak with you about the, the basic, uh, the, the basic uh, or underlying disciplines in this field. And, they, and the authors start over on page 29 where they talk about contemporary approaches to it. 
Let me walk you, walk you through that. You can see they have technical approaches and behavioral approaches, and then then the MIS is really the intersection. That's figure one point nine at the bottom, page twenty nine. Okay, I am one of those people who is a management science slash orient operations researcher type person. Okay, those that's that's I'm not a computer scientist. I'm an IT person for whom computer science provides me a way to make a decision, a way to frame a problem and make a decision. Okay, I, I, you know, I could really care less about the psychology of email. I could care, but it's important. So it, it's, it's this blend, okay? And given a particular problem or situation, the, the blends are not gonna always be the same. So, and, and the authors do a great job of walking you through behavior approaches, okay? And what they say is this really has to be a blend of the two of them. And, it's, and, and that's why they call it the socio-technical view of understanding how people interact with the technology, okay? And one of the things we found that's interesting about technology is that people tend to misuse it quite successfully. <laughs> and and let me give you let me give you a, 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 an example, okay? Cameras in cell phones, all right? Were, when when that when those first came out, people went, "Oh, what a waste!" Okay, you can take a picture, big deal, big deal. Then you have now you have Instagram, okay? So I can boom. Picture, as they say, a picture is a thousand words. I'm misusing it. Okay, I'm not using it to take wonderful, beautiful photos. I'm using it to just take these photos and boom, away we go. Okay, so it's an interesting thing about technology. It's why the authors you talk about this socio-technical approach because of the and, and if you get and if if you get a sense that. Over on page three, on where they're kind of talking about a push and a shove, that's exactly what's going on. Okay, and 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 one of the issues where this comes about is privacy. Your generation's got to figure out how to handle the issue of privacy, but yet still meet your needs. Okay, so that when you when you log in to uh, to Marco's Pizza. Okay, you don't have any trouble uh, that when you log into Marco's Pizza or Pizza Hut or whatever, they they know what you ordered before. And they'll suggest and say, "Well, here's what you ordered before," uh, and 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 they know where you live and boom, boom, boom and all of that. You're going to have to navigate those issues. You're going to have to navigate the issues of, um, you know, I, I you know, I, as you can tell, you I'm a big person. I'm stature so you know buying shoes for me is is, is rough I've got a large feet okay so I've encountered uh, you know websites that will you know have a way for me to try to to, uh, to to measure my foot so they can get an exact match I have yet to find a website where I can just take a picture of my foot from a couple angles and and they get and they give me a CAD cam design and, and, and that I can send to somebody or, they, or they'll make the shoes, okay? Now I found a website that makes shoes uh, for, for folk of, of my size, big, and a lot of them that make, that make the, it's, it's wonderful because I have, I can wear different shoes. You know how frustrating it is you know, at that point, if you're a big person, you wear big shoes, uh, you know, uh, or, big, or, or big clothes, if you're a stat, of large stature, it's rough to find stuff. So, yeah, that's the kind of thing. But when that data's there, that's private stuff. So that's one of the ways that you're really going to have to, to work your way through it. Now, as I told you, I'm not an MIS person, okay? I work with a piece of it. I work with the management science and the operations, or operations research pieces of it. That's my training. That's my background. Okay, I'm more of an IT person, i.e. it's decision-centric. Man, 
management information systems are strategy centric. That's what makes them different from IT. They're strategic in nature, okay? And they're, they tend to be game changers when they morph and they grow, okay? And, and so they should, they should augment communication, they should augment the flow of, of, of information, uh, and they should, and you remember I talked about the system and the boundaries, they should make that boundary more sensitive and more permeable to the outside world because if the firm doesn't relate well, okay, uh, to its outside environment, will survive this. So I told you, uh, you know, the, the notion of a KPI, okay, what is essentially that we need to know? Key performance indicators. Well, I've gone on for quite a while here. And, and I think I've given you a flavor of, of what, we'll be, what we'll be looking at. Now, I'm gonna pop over here to the syllabus for just a minute, okay? And then uh, here's the case follow-up. I'm gonna pop on that, okay? And I'm gonna look at speed grader. And I'll see who's uploaded some stuff. And, and uh, you know, here's something, Shane's uh, put something up here. Oh wow, John and Colton, wow, you guys have really come through. Man, Brian, Laney, Grant, I know you'll get there. Uh, uh, Alyssa, so it's good. So for, wow, this is great participation, fantastic. Thank you, Luke, I like the logo thing, very good. Um, cool. We're looking good, folks. And you know, I know we got a few of you are gonna have to get some stuff pulled together. It's, it's okay. I know you'll get there. Okay. And uh, yeah, Hudson's got some good stuff here. Allison, same story. Jason, I know you'll get something pulled together. Alex, I know you will. Jonathan. So I, I'm excited about this because uh, it looks like you guys have really got into this case follow up and uh, got after it, Dalton, same there. That's cool. So I'm really, really happy about that. So it's gonna give me a chance to do some talking and, 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 and uh, about what you've gotten done, but I think you, know, you, you kind of have a flavor now of, of what we've done. And, and, uh, and, and, we're, and, and as I said before, again, this is going to be Okay, one of those courses where we'll be talking in some wide terms, and we're going to also find as we move through that we're often that this course is often I'm going to treat it like an issues course, where there's going to be one part of this, some of you who are going to be arguing one thing, and one of you and part of you is going to argue another. For example, here's just some here's just a question for you to think about. You can go to some places in Oklahoma City and you can buy a car with the worst credit in the world. And you make a weekly payment to them. And if you miss a payment, guess what? Your car doesn't start. And for you to get it to start, okay, for the engine to start again, you have to get a payment and any interest or, or, or service charges to the people you bought the car from. Is that fair? Is that right? Is it? Is it wrong? Okay. Should we have technology that monitors your emotional state before you get in the car? Should we have a technology that determines whether or not you're, you're impaired? And if you're impaired, the car won't start. That is, those are some interesting things to talk about. And they're MIS issues. And we're going to find many times that these MIS issues that we float into have some legal ramifications with them. So here's Martin. You've, you've done some work on this. Wow. You guys have uh, hopped to it tonight. I'm really, really just so happy about this. It'll be fun to talk about this. And, uh, you know, Monday, um, I'll probably want to talk some about Home Depot and what's, and what's going on with them and then whatever else we have going on. 
Well, that's pretty much it. This is a pre-recorded uh, screencast for you for August 30th, which is uh, 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 which is Wednesday. And uh, I'm doing this instead of a live stream because of the craziness of, um, of, of convocation. And, you know, you can tune in and watch. Now, I will be sending out an email in the morning to everybody. I have a live stream in the morning to the folks who are taking uh, um, uh, BISS 1123, okay? And... Uh, and that's, of course, as you remember, this problem analysis. And then, then to, tomorrow night, which would be Tuesday night, I have a graduate class that I live stream. But during the day, I, and, and I will have on Tuesday, I will have some virtual office hours, and I'll and and, I'll, and you'll be hearing about that. So if you should happen to pop over here and, and look at it, because I'm going to send them an email and say I have the pre-recorded. If you want to see the pre-recorded tonight. Or tomorrow, you, can do it. you don't have to wait till Wednesday. Okay, folks, listen. Thank you so much. I know it's going to be a, a very interesting, fun course for us, and I, and and hopefully uh, you know, we can do some job boning about all this technology and, and what we're what it's doing to us, what it's doing for us. Thanks a lot. Now I'm going to pause the share, and then I'll stop the recording and uh, post this over the announcements and let you know it's there. Okay, and have a good one.